What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video and today we're going to be going over the Stamsorx two-handed build. So two-handed builds in general will be pulling less DPS than dual-wield builds. However, two-handed builds do have better AoE potential than dual-wield builds as well as a little bit more survivability as well. DPS difference between them is, has shrank uh, quite a bit considering where they used to be a few patches ago. Um, and so, two-handed build, you'll see them being used very often in trial guilds in AoE sort of situations, in trash bowls, for example, or in fights where cleave damage is a little bit more important than single target damage. Those would be fights like, for example, Sunspire, Lacesti's hard mode, and other sort of fights here where kind of cleave is more important than raw single target damage here. So... This is the first video in a new format here, so I will actually not be going over gear. If you want to take a look at the gear options, including the gear that I'm running for this particular build, please check out the two-handed gear video. Uh, you can find a link to that up in the upper right-hand corner right around now. Uh, instead, this video will be taking a look at specifically skills as well as the rotation itself. So let's go ahead and get started here. So in terms of skills, so this is the best combination of skills that I found to work with a two-handed build, at least on a stamina sorcerer. Um, I will be going over a couple of different skill substitutions you can make here uh, and kind of give yourself a little bit more flexibility when it comes to certain fights as well as if you need some certain sort of utilities involved. So for our front bar, this is the two-handed bar here. We have Carve, Executioner, Wrecking Blow. Hurricane, Bound Armaments, and Flawless Dawnbreaker. Now, instead of Flawless Dawnbreaker here, you can use something like Absorption Field for the heal or Suppression Field if you want to go for more better AoE damage, uh, just because the other ultimate on your back bar, the Stormmaster Nag ultimate, is mostly single target. So having Suppression Field here as an AoE ultimate is very, very useful to have on hand. In the back bar, you have Consuming Soul Trap, Poison Injection, Arrow Barrage, Dark Deal, Barb Trap, and greater storm match neck now for dark deal you might not necessarily need this if you're able to sustain well enough without it then there's no need to run dark deal in which case you can start running a different move instead of dark deal now in terms of other sort of abilities you want to have on hand in terms of actual sort of sork abilities there really aren't that many um, the only one that you might want to consider running would be something like power surge or crit surge for additional healing uh, you'd be running crit surge instead of power surge here a power surge would only be if you want to kind of do an aoe heal which is as a dps you wouldn't really be doing so you'd probably run critical surge instead uh, you could run this if you want to self heal but there are better ways to get self heals outside of critical surge here but really quickly under the two-handed line uh for wrecking blow i found that using wrecking blow up until around 33 to 25 percent of the boss's health is going to give you the best sort of dps bonus here and then from there you swatch over to executioner However, I do want to point out uh, that Stampede combined with a VMA uh, Battle Axe or Great Sword is one potential option. It did not do quite as well, so I don't personally recommend it, but it is one option here if you kind of want to run that. In terms of Carve versus Brawler, Carve is going to give you better DPS because it does have the bleed associated with it. However, Brawl will give you more ability because it gives you a damage shield. So with the, right off the bat, you will always get a 5k damage shield. And if you manage to hit anything, you get a 50% increase on top of that. So in this instance, it would give me about 7.5k uh, damage shield, which is just under half of my health. So Brawler is actually really decent morph, uh, especially if you're going more for less speed, more for survivability, like progression style stuff. So you could pick whichever morph you prefer here. And same thing here with Reverse Slash Execution will give you more single target DPS, but Reverse Slice will give you better AoE damage because it now has a little bit of a splash component behind it. Um, so it's kind of up to you which one you want to go for. So raw single target, go for Executioner. Want a little bit more cleave for sacrificing some single target, Reverse Slice is the way to go. A lot of people actually prefer to use Reverse Slice uh, because the kind of point of a two-hand build is to get more AoE. And so reverse slice just helps out with the additional AoE, especially if you are reverse slicing something and execute, uh, you know, with 10%, 15% health remaining, the splash damage is actually very, very powerful here. 
Uh, and then if you are in a situation where you're just kind of plugging things, you don't want to use weapon power potions for whatever reason, you can run uh, momentum, rally, or either more rally or forward momentum, uh, whichever one you prefer. Uh, rally is probably going to be a little bit worse just because you heal when the effect ends rather than just um, every single second. So they did change that. Um, but other thing is forward momentum also gives you some immunity from stairs mobilizations which actually could be pretty useful um, if you're able to time it correctly uh, under the bow there's really no other no other good uh, abilities here uh, if you ever need some sort of my major evasion which actually does help out survivability quite a bit you can run elude or shuffle uh, elude will give you the major expedition shuffle will give you immobiliz uh, Im immunity to snares and mobilizations uh, so pick whichever one you'd prefer here. You can see Elude would actually last for 40 seconds compared to Shuffle for 20 seconds. Uh, so you get a little bit better sustain out of Elude. Uh, but the immunity that you get from Shuffle is actually quite useful. Uh, in terms of other abilities, uh, if you just want to just stack up on your weapon damage, you can use any of these abilities here. Silver Leash is nice if you need to help the tank chain things in. Your preservation for a heal. The heal does scale off of weapon damage and smack stamina, so your heal is actually going to be stronger than a healer or a tank that's running ringer preservation. You can see here 656 every half second here uh, before all of our buffs. So it's actually quite useful as a self heal on top of the mind protection. So uh, some groups for progression will run ringer preservation for the healer mind protection in certain scenarios. So definitely a skill that I would recommend picking up. And then I do want to point out Camouflaged Hunter might be a useful, uh, depending on you, uh, the specific fight that you're going for. Uh, while it's slotted, whenever you do critical damage from the flank of an enemy, so either to the sides or right behind them, you get Minor Berserk. So uh, for, for example, Sunspire, if you're in the portal DPS, this could be helpful down there because you won't get a healer downstairs, uh, so you're getting the additional Minor Berserk down there is really nice for Camouflaged Hunter. Uh, beyond that, not really anything else here. Uh, Scratching Weapon is a weaker Scramble than Wrecking Blow and Reverse Slice. And then under the Anointed Line, Shadow Silk is decent if you want to provide additional synergy for your Stamina DPS. Uh, but it's usually not worth running on a Stamina DPS. It's usually better off being run on a Support Roll instead. Bone Surge if you want a shield. Uh, it's not going to be very strong, but it it's a shield nonetheless, a stamina shield. Uh, it also provides additional synergy, so that's nice for tanks if you're able to get that synergy off to the tank for Alkosh uptime. Uh, but generally speaking, Bone Surge, much like Shadow Silk, will be placed on a support roll, well, not really on a DPS. Then, as always, you have Vigor, Resolving, or Echoing, depending on whether you want a stronger self-heal or a AoE heal. Uh, most groups will prefer Echoing Vigor for the AoE heal, even though it does usually end up being a weaker heal for yourself, just because Echoing Vigor will stack on each other. So if you have multiple Echoing Vigors going, that'll pretty much out-heal Resolving Vigors. So this is really nice for a... Uh, both self heal and a, an AoE heal as well. This is typically the heal that you will be running as a stamina uh, DPS across the board. Uh, like I said, Sorks, you could run Critical Surge, uh, but Echoing Vigor, because it does stack on top of each other, is generally speaking going to be a little bit better. Uh, and that's pretty much it for skills. In terms of character sheets, Dark Elf uh, is going to be one of the better racial options. You also have Orcs. Both races get 258 weapon damage. Dark Elves get 1875 stamina, and Orcs get 2000 stamina and I believe 1000 health. So Orcs do get a little bit more survivability built in, but Dark Elves get the flexibility between swapping between Magic and Stamina DPS because they get the exact same bonuses, uh, uh, Max Magicka and Spell Damage. So 1875 Max Magicka and 258 Spell Damage. So Dark Elves kind of make for a good flexible position here if you want to flex between the two different DPS specs. Then you have the sort of sustained races, Red Guards, Imperials, and Wood Elves. All three of them get 2,000 max stamina, but instead of the weapon damage, they get sources of sustain. So for example, Wood Elves get 258 stamina regen, Imperials get 3% cost reduction to all abilities, and 333 uh, uh, whenever they deal damage across all the different resources, so 333 magic get health and stamina back. Red Guards just get stamina back, but they get about 990 stamina back every time they deal damage. So those are going to be your main racial options here. 
Uh, all points are into stamina here. You could run blue food. Uh, a lot of classes will be able to run blue food. Stamp Spark is definitely one of them if you decide to use Dark Deal. Uh, sustain is actually very easy on stamina DPS now because of the inclusion of Consuming Trap. Uh, so there's really no reason to put any point in the health if you're running blue food. Now, if you're running gold food, uh, that's Artem Tegway Broth or Dubis Kamorn Throne, then yes, you might need to put some points in the health or uh, put a health enchant on one of your armor pieces to make up for that loss in health there. So kind of play around that a little bit, uh, but generally speaking, blue food is the way to go, and then you will not need any points in the health. Starting the Shadow Mundus, and we are running parse food for this parse, uh, just because we want to give you an accurate comparison between other DPS builds on this channel. Now I am a vampire, but you don't have to be a vampire if you don't want to. You get 10% additional stamina and magicka regen at stage 2, uh, which is decent. Uh, you do end up taking more damage from fire damage, and your health regen is lower. So you kind of need to decide on that trade-off ability here uh, with vampirism. In terms of champion points, TP cap is still 810. Nothing has changed for CP cap here, and so uh, we still have 270 across each of our different constellation colors. For our green CPs, just make sure to get 100 into Mooncalf, and then you can place the other uh, sort of CPs wherever you'd like. So, for example, I have 7 Fat Tenacity, 3 to 1 Shadow Ward, 3 to 3 Tumbling, and 3 to 1 Warlord. But you can shift points out of Tenacity if you feel like you need to put them elsewhere. Uh, if you're not heavy attacking very often, then obviously you don't need it in Tenacity as much, so you can kind of drop them down as long as you're hitting your jump points. That's the only thing that really matters. For blue CPs, uh, we have 64 Mighty. Uh, I need to actually adjust these. So you should have... Uh, let me just get the appropriate amount of CPs. You should have 61 Piercing, 49 Mighty, 56 Precise Strikes, 56 Thaumaturge, and 40 into Master at Arms. You will notice we have a little bit more into Master at Arms on a two-handed build compared to a dual wield build, uh, mainly because of Executioner and um, Wrecking Blow here. Uh, both of them deal direct damage, and they do do quite a bit of DPS, so we just want to make sure we're maximizing our Master at Arms damage here. Um, everything else is kind of self-explanatory here. Now, if you are running something like One Piece Krog, or you're running something like Stockman's Warband, then you will be able to reduce the amount of CPs into Piercing down by about 1,500 or so, and you can put them into other nodes. So you can bump Mighty up to like 56 or 64, Precise Strikes up to 61, etc. And finally, our red CPs, we have 81 to Ironclad, 61 to Thick Skin, and 64 in both Hardy and Elemental Defender for a very balanced approach to our overall mitigation. So with all that said and done, uh, really quickly, let's go ahead and talk about our rotation, and then we'll do a 21 million dummy parts so you guys can get an idea of what amount of DPS that we're able to pull here. Now, the rotation itself... Uh, the backward rotation hasn't changed between dual wield and two-handed build. It's mainly your main. It's mainly your front bar because obviously we don't have flurry, we don't have cruel flurry uh, to worry about. So your back bar pretty much remains exactly the same. So you're always just going to want to pre-buff with dark deal. Start off with rearming trap, and then from here, put up your dots, and then just wrecking blow. Just wrecking blow spam this whole time. Then go back to your back bar, re-up your dots. And go back to your front bar. You'll have to re-up Carve. Uh, Hurricane does have 15 second duration, so it's going to be a little bit offset from Carve. So you don't necessarily need to activate it every time you're on your front bar. But you will be activating Carve every time you're on your front bar here. Trap will be every second time you're on your back bar. Same with Dark Deal. And then once you hit around uh, 30 to 25% max health remaining on the uh, target, you'll be swapping to Executioner instead. So once we bring it down to about 30% health or so, swap over to Executioner rather than Wrecking Blow. Uh, so that's pretty much the entire rotation here. The only thing that's... it's mainly static. The only thing that's going to be a little bit quasi, uh, out of rotation here is going to be when you use Hurricane. That's just, just because it has a 15 second duration compared to uh, everything else. It doesn't really line up very well, so just use it once it goes down and you're on your front bar again. Uh, but that is pretty much the rotation. Like I said, very static. Uh, so again, uh, you just start off with your back bar. Just get your dots going and then wrecking blow until about 30% 30, 30 or so. 
uh, and then you will be swapping off between Dark Deal and Barb Trap depending on uh, what time you're on your back bar. So you'll notice here that I do use Barb Trap a second time uh, when I do my back bar, and that way it offset Dark Deal and Barb Trap. So that way I'm not spending too much time on my back bar. Uh, that'll allow me to spend a little bit more time on my front bar to get more spamples going. So we'll go ahead and do a tournament and let me parse to give you guys an idea of where this build stands compared to other stamina DPS builds on this channel here. Don't necessarily take this build, uh, my parse, and compare it to somebody like Lyco or somebody else uh, who might be better DPS. Just use this in comparison to other uh, DPS builds that I have on my channel. So let's go ahead and get started here. So again, back bar is going to be very simple and then just use your storm atronach whenever it's up on the back bar i usually like to end with it so you will see here that i do use uh rearming trap again and that's just to offset dark deal and barb trap and again hurricane is a little bit weird so just re-up it as soon as it runs out now we are running lakesis on our front bar here so we just need to make sure we are using our synergies on our front bar rather than our back bar. there. I don't think my Dark Duel went off. So it's really important that you let Hurricane run out, that way you get the bigger ticks from it. Be careful with activating synergies uh, with Wrecking Blow because it is a channel, so you'll not be able to use potions or use synergies while you're channeling it. You're gonna have to wait for the channel to end in order to use synergies or drink any potions. So you'll notice that my sustain is very decent here, and that's partly because of the parse food, but it's also partly because of Dark Deal. So if you're using blue food, you will end up needing to use Dark Deal the entire time. However, because I'm using parse food, I might not need to use Dark Deal as often. So again, once we hit around 30 to 25% health here, we'll be uh, changing over to Executioner rather than Wrecking Blow. Oh, you know what I just realized? I have not actually been using Marcelox. That's why my parse is so low. So we'll actually reset the dummy here. I completely forgot that I'm running Marcelox here. I'm just very used to VMA build on the Sork. So you guys can actual accurate comparison here. Sorry about that. We forgot about that. So I like to use Marsh Lock right after I use Carve on my front bar. Oops. Use Hurricane a little bit earlier there. And that's again because of Wrecking Blow has a channel, so it's a little bit weird to try to bash weave Wrecking Blow, so it's easier just to use your bash right after you use Carve or right before you use Carve here. 
you will need to rebind uh, your bash from uh, your two mouse buttons to something else. Mars lock timing here. There we go. Here, pretty static rotation. Now we're getting uh, starting to get a little bit close to the 25% cutoff here. Still have a little bit of ways to go though. So at this point, instead of Wrecking Blow, we're using uh, Reverse Slice, Executioner, or Reverse Slice, whichever one you happen to be using. But everything else remains exactly the same. Here, I'm just gonna let my backward dodge run out and just keep spamming my executioner. And there you have it. So, our overall DPS was 91.6k. So, again, lower than your dual wield build, uh, but still very decent DPS nonetheless. Uh, again, generally speaking, dual wield will pull higher single target DPS, but your two hander build will be able to do more cleave DPS. So, if we had some more dummies around the side, uh, comparing a two hander to a dual wield build, you'll see that the two hander build will usually end up doing more AoE DPS compared to uh, a, a dual wield build here. But again, uh, one of the main things that's kind of drawing us back a little bit is we don't have as much physical penetration just because we aren't actually able to meet the 58 uh, 50 physical penetration here without using something like Sharpened or One Piece Craw, One Piece Veladrath. Uh, so you could try that out, or you can do something like Togmans to try to get to the physical penetration cap. Kind of up to you how you want to meet that here. But even still, we're able to pull 91.6k with a precise uh, front bar here. But that's going to be it for this build video. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys have any questions or comments about this build. Hope you guys found this video informative, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.